they're back. So friends, guns are back in Dying Light 2 because of modders. The modding community has successfully been able to add in guns, new animations, new weapon mods, and also bring back some old E3 cut content. They're also making changes to the sky. It actually doesn't end here. Remember Aiden? Aiden who? Aiden gone. Behold, your new main character, Timon Smectala. The accuracy and resemblance that it shares to him is quite staggering. You see, with the guns, the gun that I can't hold because of this green screen, that, that's probably all messed up right now. The guns that were added in range from a wide variety. It goes from an exploding pistol to a bloodtastic Scorpio. But put the gun aside, throw that <laughs> throw that over there. We're gonna cover that after the sponsor. It's a surprise tool we're gonna use for later. But let's go ahead and start out with the E3 one. First up with this mod, it introduces changes to the Renegades outfits, making it more in line with what was presented to us in the E3 demo so many years ago. It does give them more of a amateur look, but it also gives them a little bit more character than what we currently have. Back in my original review for Dying Light 2, one of my biggest complaints was the enemies, specifically the Renegades. There was a lack of variety to them. I mean, I do understand it. They're all in a faction together. They're supposed to share some similarities. But what we ended up getting was the same outfits, same voices, same abilities, nothing special. It was kind of bland and ordinary here. And by restoring the original models, it does go and give them some more variety here. What I really love about this mod is that it is fully compatible with the second one that I'm going to show you changes to the PK. Restoring their old uniforms of brighter blue and overall looking a lot more makeshift. It's less military and formal. It looks like it came out of a world that is actually struggling to survive. I mean, just take a look at it. It looks like something that was made out of a garage. It's hockey gear taped up and stitched together to go and show that power and dominance over others. It looks like the peacekeepers as a faction are just taking advantage of what they have and utilizing it to the best of their ability. Both this mod and the Renegade ones are great to see being present. Both mods don't alter every single enemy that you encounter, therefore it does lead to a higher variety of NPCs with different outfits. You may have noticed that the Renegade mod looks awfully close to how the Renegades look for the Colonel, which I think is awesome because honestly, I think I preferred his version in the base game. But speaking of the Colonel, that hunk of a guy right there, he had a gun, remember? This thing right here? Well, there's actually a way to go and use it. And I'm actually gonna go and show you how to... Who, Who's this guy right here? Hey dude, the Titans came in Hero Wars. Uh -oh. Hero Wars? That sounds so familiar. That's because they are today's sponsor on Epic Fantasy MMORPG that you can play right now by using my link down below in the description. Now here's the thing. Let me tell you a little bit about Hero Wars. It has a mountain of characters that you can choose from. You can choose cyborgs, aliens, vampires, and then you also have Chubba. That guy right there, he's a tank that eats people. Kinda wish he would eat me. You also have Celeste, an S tier character with two attack forms, DPS dark, and hero light. This makes her viable in any situation possible. She actually just got a new romantic skin. I kind of wish I was in that. The best part about Hero Wars is that you can play it anywhere, on the subway or at the divorce hearing when your wife leaves you. But like we said earlier, new titans in the game, one of the most badass ones is Kairos, the titan of darkness. He can devour enemies' vitality, then attack with it. Honestly, Hero Wars, it's really easy to start playing. You can assemble a team of perfect heroes. You have Mojo the Shaman, who can't heal Darkstar the Elf as efficiently as Grandma Martha. While Chad Cleaver over here, he pairs very nicely with Isaac. But Hero Wars, over 100 million players, six unique modes, over 300 Guild Ward servers that you can join with or without your friends. But wait, there's a lot more. Where can you go and get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and five awesome heroes to start dominating in Hero Wars? That's right, you go down below into the description, click that link, play it right now, and thank you so much to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video. And we're back. Definitely didn't get a haircut in between takes. We also didn't break my green screen. We didn't do any of that. We love continuity around here. But guns, your favorite modder, Bub, AKA the best thing since sliced bread, has made a mod for them. The four that we are going to go over is the explosive pistol, the colonel's pistol, the bloodtastic Scorpio, and also the machine gun. What's really funny too here is that Bub actually made a little cutscene and made it fit into the lore of the game. So for those of you that don't know, when it comes to the history of guns in Dying Light 2, they were confiscated by the military after the March Massacre. This was done for order and control. Some say there may be a hidden stash, but no one knows for sure. If you want more information on that, you can click the video 
up there or, or over there, one of those corners. But in Bub's version, survivors were able to avoid the confiscation and hide their weapons in crates and the mod is to go and help uncover them. By heading to this location, you can get one of the first weapons, the explosive pistol. And this thing really packs a punch, especially with the rampage event going on. It makes for a ton of hilarious moments, I have to say. Every single shot that you make, a massive explosion occurs. It's like a little mini grenade launcher in a pistol form. Little bonus here too, you can actually turn this into a weapon to attack even more enemies. Next up, we have the Colonel's pistol, which if I'm being honest, I was kind of disappointed to not see this in the video version of the game but spoiler alert for a game that came out over six months ago i'll give you three seconds to click that timestamp and go there if you don't want to hear this three two one all right here we go as you progress through the story you and your pk boys you infiltrate his stronghold and eventually you come to a one-on-one -on -one face off where you do share an emotional scene together things go sideways he ends up dead but here's the thing aiden just leaves the pistol there aiden just wants nothing to do with that gun right there he he doesn't want it he doesn't think to pick it up or what he just leaves it behind like my dad when he wants to go get milk. Granted, ammo around this time is very scarce, but it would have made some sense to at least pick it up for later, maybe as a trophy or a collectible, maybe use the remaining ammo on whoever you please, but that opportunity isn't presented to us. So as a solution, Bub now made the Colonel's Pistol a weapon that you can use, one of which you can find in the crate. And honestly, this is one that makes me further believe that it should have been in the game on day one. The previous modded weapon, the Explosive Pistol, it's just for pure fun. It's just something to download, turn your brain off, shoot some zombies, and it's really nothing more than that. But the Colonel's Pistol, on the other hand, could be a very viable weapon that I would love to see implemented. Of course, if it was brought into Dying Light 2, it would have to fit lore purposes, and I think it actually will. Well, let's go on up the ante a bit. Let's talk about that Bloodtastic Scorpio. So this is a different variant and type of Scorpio that Bub added into the game. The original design was presented to us back in E3 2018, where it would shoot bullets and also flip over into a two-handed melee weapon. With Bub's version, you can now shoot and cause huge explosions of guts to fly everywhere. Most of the infected that you hit with this weapon will explode in a gory fashion. And just like E3, press X to flip it over and use it as a two-handed melee weapon to fight more enemies. And lastly, we do have the machine gun, and this one may look familiar to you. It's actually one of the upgrades that is tied behind the peacekeepers. Typically, this gun is mounted on the back of trucks or in certain locations of Villador, and the mod that we have here, it takes it off and uses it as a standalone weapon. And this shit will bring you a smile on your face, okay? Doing it is special especially in the nighttime where it's so chaotic and busy is a sight to see. It really makes you wish it was possible. And honestly, after playing around with these types of weapons, I think that guns do have a place in Dying Light 2. Most of these are makeshift weapons with a slight variation, and what Bub was able to do with these limited tools is incredible. Honestly, I don't think modern guns would fit into this world. Guns that are creative and look like they were stitched together in, in a garage or a workshop would fit perfectly in this world. And as time goes on, mods will continue to expand as well. Techline has already stated that they're looking for ways to bring mods onto the console. And if that's the case, no one will be left behind. So if Techline doesn't add guns, I'm sure the community is just going to go rampant with it and add it themselves. But now, enough gun talk. Let's shift topics a bit and talk about those major quality of life improvements. First up, this mod allows you to purchase weapon charms from the Craftmasters. It's an added level of customization for cosmetic weapons that is currently missing from Dying Light 2 at this moment. This mod lets you purchase charms that are already existing in the game. It also lets you purchase those weapon charms that were tied behind another purchase. For example, the Pizza Slice one was tied behind ordering pizza on the Slice mobile app. You now have a way to go and get this into the game. And this mod is by no means all the weapon charms that are available. It just does allow you to purchase some of the ones that you normally wouldn't. I think it's definitely worth for Techland exploring, especially if they're keen on expanding character customization and cosmetics. There's no reason they shouldn't. But since we're on the topic of shops and craft masters, let's take a look at this one. This next mod makes changes to the stash and store background. It's a little something to make it more interesting than the ordinary background that we currently have. Just a little something something to make it more pleasing to the eyes. Next up, there is a mod that allows you to skip all the intros in Dying Light 2, allowing you for a quick way to hop into the game. It skips the Intel logo, Techland screen, and also that really long Dying Light 2 in-game cinematic trailer. I mean, yes, you can go and skip it once you're in, 
but why not just add the option for us to do it beforehand? It's a simple option for the players that would work tremendously on all platforms. Now, this next mod actually makes a change to the animations for long blade weapons and matches it with the animations for the katana. When chapter two came out, chapter one received a katana and Techland kind of changed how the katana animations were. They reworked the entire system and honestly, it led to some of the best animations in the game for attacking. Adding in these animations for the long blade weapons did add some variety to it and honestly I kind of hope that Teglin continues to expand on the animation and hopefully down the road they'll introduce more like they did with the katana and now my favorite mod in this entire video the overhaul to the special infected you're gonna need your diapers for this one all right the scarier special infected retextured 2.0 makes all of them a ton more horrifying the modder was able to make all of them look more dangerous in their presence in the world feels like a nightmare when you come across them. If you pair this with any other mod that increases the spawn rate of infected, you're going to be in for a wild treat. This is one of those mods where it's a good example of what Teklin could do in the future for our current infected. I doubt we'll see a major overhaul like this coming into Dying Light 2, but you never know. I will say that some of these designs could work very well for future mutations that we may get. I mean, if Teklin were to do a Halloween event, this could be something of interest to kind of dive into. But to go and finish this video off, we have a mod to craft weapons and craft new modifications. All of this is thanks to Best Gamer Ali. Go check his channel out. He's, he, he covers Dying Light 2 a little bit. He's also actually working on a mod to craft armor as well, so stay tuned to that. But with this, he was able to create these mods and implement them right into patch 1.6. And we spoke about this in my 8-month review, but remember how in the original Dying Light, we could collect blueprints from around the world and use those to craft weapons while BJ was able to do exactly that and you can now download this mod be able to craft over 100 weapons for you to use and mod further into Dying Light 2. It overall adds a lot more options for the player and when you're comparing Dying Light 1 to Dying Light 2 it feels like a huge downgrade in this area as it wasn't included. The fact that a mod is able to completely overhaul the current state of the game for the better it's breathtaking. And honestly, it has me really excited to see what modders are going to come up with in the future. But lastly, like we said, you can craft new weapon mods as well. These weapon mods are the ones that were introduced in chapter two, specifically the ones that were on the katana that we saw earlier. This mod allows you to unlock those and now be able to modify it onto your weapon. And this mod actually pairs very well with another mod that I discovered, which is actually to detach mods off of your weapons. So if you're crafting and modding and you don't like what you put on, this mod allows you to dismantle it right off the weapon and put it right back into its ordinary plain state. Certainly a major quality of life change, and I can see both sides of the story. What do you think? Do you want that one in the game? Do you not want it in? Be happy to hear it. But friends, if you haven't seen my eight month review, go give it a watch, spend a lot of time on it, and it's a video that I'm truly proud of. But once again, thank you so much to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video. Guys, sponsorships on this channel, they really help out a lot. I'm able to go and do new and creative things that I normally wouldn't be able to do without the help of sponsorships. So thank you so much to Hero Awards for, for sponsoring this video. It really goes a long way. But yeah, end of video. Bye.